quiet, quiet. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another ServiceNow Community Ask the Expert event. Today, we have, we're doing a proactive customer service for digital services. We have with us Raul Guha as well, and Abhi Brele. Welcome. So we'll have a little bit of a housekeeping slide. I just want to let you know that this video is going to be recorded, and it becomes on demand immediately on YouTube, and we will have it on the event page for this um, event today. And so if you're watching, you can please post your questions within um, our chat, either on the YouTube or on the Zoom. And you can always uh, re go and rewatch it on the community and post questions for our experts to answer. And don't forget, you can join the community to post your questions and it's free to join. Uh, we also have a little survey link at the end um, of this event because we'd like to hear your feedback. It's a short survey. And we want to like, please tell us what you feel about not only the content, but also our, our speakers. And then with that, we'll get, get on with our broadcast. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, for who's listening live right now or who's catching the recording. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Abhi Rele, and I'm part of the Customer Workflows Business Unit at ServiceNow. I lead outbound product management for proactive customer service operations. I've been here for a year, and I'm super excited to talk to you about this topic. And joining me is my partner in crime, Rahul. Hi, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rahul Guha. I'm uh, part of the inbound product management team uh, leading this uh, particular initiative around proactive customer service. I've been with ServiceNow for the last three years, and in addition to this, I uh, lead a few other topics like analytics and uh, case management. Cool. So both uh, Rahul and I are in the same room here, so we're going to keep this conversational. You'll hear us ask each other questions. We'll chime in. We're going to keep this as informal as possible. We do have to go through a more formal for, uh, safe harbor notice. We won't read through it, but we this is needed in case we end up talking about any future capabilities. Our agenda for today is pretty straightforward. We'll talk to you about proactive customer service operations. Do that for a little bit, but then jump into a demo and spend most of our time showing you how it works. Seeing is believing, so you'll get to see it in action. We'll then summarize with the top practices we shared with you. We'll give you some additional resources where you can learn more, and then we'll keep time for Q&A. Our plan is to keep Q&A at the end so we can go through the content, but go ahead and keep posting your questions as you go through. Not all of you might be familiar with the customer service management product, so let me just take a couple slides and introduce you to customer service management, and then we'll dive deep into the topic for the webinar. So when we started building customer service management a few years back, we took all the great capabilities that, that you are all familiar with and love from the ServiceNow platform. We retained our service management differentiation that lets us resolve issues, uh, uh, complex issues. And we built capabilities that enabled you to take ServiceNow and help serve external customers. Two specific examples, we built a customer data model which extended company but allowed you to model your external customers, partners, contacts, their relationships. We also introduced the case object which lets you have a business or customer friendly conversation with your external customers while you continue to resolve technical issues through incident and problem, for example. Our customer service management value proposition rests on three pillars. We want to break down the silos that exist between teams, processes, and systems, and help our customers resolve complex issues end-to-end. -end. We want to help our customers be more proactive so they can monitor issues, they can even resolve these issues before their customers know that they exist. And we want to drive up the levels of self-service so you can automate more, you can personalize more, and you can help your customers and customer service agents 
take care of common requests instantly. What this means, and some of you might have seen this before, it's a slide that many of our customers love. A customer could come in and report an issue or ask a question through a channel of their choice that leads to the creation of a case. We then use that case to orchestrate a whole series of work from the rest of the company. For example, you might create a work order to send a field technician on site to repair a product. You might create a problem so an engineer could fix the root cause of an issue, or you might trigger a workflow so a financial analyst could go review a bill and make sure the calculations are correct. But you don't have to wait for the customer to contact you. You can also monitor your connected or digital services and proactively create an incident or a case, and that case now can be used to orchestrate work internally or communicate with the customer. And that completes the picture. It doesn't matter whether a customer contacts you first or you discover an issue first. You can involve the right teams within your company, and you can keep the customer abreast of how that issue is being resolved. So that, in a nutshell, is customer service management. And with that context, we'd love to jump into the webinar topic for today. We gave you this context because there's a lot of stuff that customer service management does that we won't touch upon in this webinar, and we want to make sure you have that at the back of your mind as we dive deep into digital services. So Rahul, you've been a product manager for a number of years. How are digital services changing the way our customers work? So that's a great question, Abhi. So what we are seeing in uh, most of our customers uh, in, the, in our install base is that uh, we, uh, the customers are providing services to their end users in the form of, uh, you know, some code running somewhere in some server, right? So, uh, for example, take uh, this customer that provides uh, printing services. These are essentially large printers they used to sell to their end customers, but now they are selling an outcome of, you know, 99.99% uh, availability. So for that to happen, it's just not a, a, an asset that is being sold to a customer. It is the service that goes along with it, the monitoring, the, the, uh, the proactive repair, and everything. So that's a perfect example of a digital service in a B2B scenario. And we are all aware of digital services being provided to uh, consumers like us. We are all consumers. So it just so happens that customer service has taken a new kind of face with the advent of digital services and digital transformation we are seeing in the organizations. And it doesn't have to be technology companies only. It can be financial services. It could be healthcare. Everybody is adding code somewhere, Absolutely. as you mentioned. Absolutely. And we experience that as end consumers. You know, today when you have a question, you know, when I have a question, I don't call anyone. In fact, I don't even think about calling. I want to take care of that myself. When something is being worked on, I want assurance that the problem is fixed. I don't want to keep calling over and over again. And then the third one is I expect the company to be proactive because in a digital service where the company is aware of that service, they have visibility into that service, if I have to call them and tell them there is a problem, that is probably the worst experience you can have. You know, why am I telling you there's a problem is something that no company wants to hear. And the more digital you become, the more important it is that customers are not calling you and reporting these issues. And that's something, you know, we are all spoiled because dealing with digital services as end consumers, we are used to things being made available through self-service. We are used to things being fixed quickly. We're used to being told when there is an issue, we don't have to wait to call uh, the consumer giants, if you will, the digital native. <clears throat> and now we expect that from almost every company we interact with. But Rahul, when we talk to our customers, they're, they intellectually they get that they need to be proactive, but that's not the reality on the ground. Uh, what have you seen? So, uh, Avi, the major issue that we see uh, is that there is a silo between the front end customer service organizations, the front office, if you will, and the back office, which is where uh, the data center operations are housed, the network operations center, the SREs are working on, on issues. So many times what happens is that it's not so much as the 
organization doesn't know that there is an issue. They don't know that customers, which customers are being affected because of that issue. And for that, they have to go back to the old ways of maintaining names on an Excel and then sending out emails. So the whole process somewhere breaks down because of the because of the organizational silos and because of not having a full end-to-end data model and visibility across the organization. And that, you know, we've heard horror stories. Um, if you remember this customer where the operations team let customer service know there was an issue, and that's all that the customer service team got. And right. now they had to figure out what to do. Yep. And they went in and created an Excel list of all the customers they thought were impacted, sent out a message to all of them. And that's probably the worst way of handling it because as they described to us, it's, you might have contacted people who were not affected. Exactly. It's, you might just end up opening a can of forms. And that seems to be more prevalent than we would like. Absolutely. Right? So when, when you started looking at this problem, how did you think we could solve it? What could we do better? So uh, there are a few different things, right? One is to uh, understand which customers are subscribing to which services. So we came up with a way to connect those two worlds together using a uniform data model. And the, it was simpler for us because ServiceNow as a system of action across the entire organization uh, helps us kind of you know do that sort of collaboration and putting the customer's visibility on top of, if you will, a service of our CMDB helps us do that. So we'll get a little bit more into details of how this was done. That's the topic for the uh, webinar. But essentially, that was the uh, that was the value that we brought to the customers in terms of uh, you know breaking down the silo and making it obvious like which customers are affected. So really, so what you're saying is you're just we're just taking everything we've done within service now, whether it is. ITOM for monitoring, CMDB for recording, all the different um, services and products that are deployed, having one system of action, deploying these workflows, making sure everybody operates out of that one system. Exactly. And you're really leveraging the power of service now, if you will. So what did we introduce in New York? Tell us a little bit about proactive customer service operations. So proactive customer service operations is a, is a uh, brand new feature or of capability in CSM. Uh, so just to be absolutely fair, you know, this was already possible. So we had seen many of our customers who were kind of our, you know, uh, provided the leadership on mm-hmm. this, uh, kind of go down this path, but they were putting in a lot of customizations and they were having to do a lot of work. So we learned from them, which is the great way to do product management, right? So we learned from them and what we understood are three core pillars, if you will, for proactive customer service to be successful. The first one, as we all know, is, you know, about ITOM in ServiceNow uh, kind of, you know, uh, helps us do, which is service monitoring and correlation of alerts coming from many different systems and reduction of noise, right? But having that service monitoring and automated, uh, you know, run books and stuff helps us kind of get to a point where, you know, not, not every not every issue is an outage. Right. So for the smaller issues to take care of the smaller issues without even letting the customer know is what the first pillar is. So we want to be very good at service monitoring and uh, easy resolution of those services at the knock itself. Mm-hmm. Right. But for those issues where there is customer impact and we have to have to create an incident or a case to let the customer know, uh, we need to we need a better data model around our service our install base. So that's exactly what we did. So using service mapping or discovery on the item side, now that we know that this is the business services uh, and using a concept called a service product model, which is again a new type of product model that we introduced in New York, we could bring together all our accounts and the consumers and say that, okay, this particular account is using this business service or this CI, right, which we, which we are calling the service aware install base. Uh, and we have put in <clears throat> uh, some of the... Uh, I, if you will, some of the integration points that is our customers could put in, but they could automate this uh, service aware install based creation through existing means like uh, provisioning and stuff. Uh, then the third thing that we focused on is how do we reduce that uh, uh, that process kind of absence of that process uh, so that a knock operator having identified a set of customers that could be affected because of the service aware install base 
could have an easy way of communication uh, communication with the customer service organization. So we created something called a proactive case. It's not a new entity by any means. It is a case object that we all know, but it has some some features like you know the sources of the alert, the uh, that it has a proactive flag set to true, which lets the customer service organization know that you know this is something that they need to take care of, and there are multiple customers who could be affected. And then we have the entire you know major issue management process, which we'll go into. Uh, that takes care of the rest. But these are the three pillars, if you will, that make us proactive customer service possible. So this is the beauty of the ServiceNow platform, where it's so flexible, customers have taken advantage of it to do very creative things. And what we are doing is providing it out of the box. So where customers have had to go in and connect different pieces and maybe put in customizations that were expensive or brittle, now they can do this out of the box. So it's another application that's provided out of the box to our customers. Exactly. So with that, let us switch to a demo and we'll show you live. And like every demo, it worked before the meeting for sure. So we will, um, so hopefully it works as well. So, well actually let me show you the flow. Uh, before we show you the actual demo, we're going to look at four personas in this demo. We'll start with David Liu, who's a network operations engineer. We will look at Beth Anglin, who's a major case manager. We will look at Julie Lewis, who is an end customer, who works for Boxeo. John Jason, a customer service agent, is also a key persona, but we won't look at him just in the interest of time. The way the demo will flow is David Liu will, uh, in the knock, look at the new operator workspace, notice an alert, and also notice that an incident is created. For the first time, he will, note, he will now know which customers are affected, so he knows the customer impact of that issue. He will let customer service know through a proactive case. We've put in a automation that creates a major case automatically. Beth Anglin will get that notification. She's a major case manager, so she go, she'll go in and ensure that it is really a major case that requires a advanced workflow. She'll approve it, at which point customer service now has initiated their workflow of notifying customers. But David Liu, our NOC operator, he's not sitting idle. He's working on the incident, so he'll go in and make updates to the incident as he works on the issue. We'll show you how those updates are available now to Beth Anglin. So for the first time, she will see what's happening with the issue resolution. And then finally, we'll, she'll make that up, those updates available to customers, and we'll show you how Julie Lewis can log into the customer portal and see the updates uh, through the portal. So no need to call uh, customer service and figure out what the issue is. We'll start with the alert, and we'll show you how the customer proactively gets that notification. So with that, let me switch to David Liu. So this is David Liu. I'm going to use Chrome people. So that way you can keep track of who we are, who, which persona we are on. So this is the NOC engineer, David Liu. David Liu is working, looking at his operator workspace. He's monitoring a number of services. Most of them are green, but he notices that there are three that are red. And in particular, he is worried about rewards processing because that's part of a new loyalty solution that his company has launched to external <laughs> customers and they want to make sure customers are happy. So he clicks on the alert to learn a little more about uh, this alert, and he sees it's critical, it's urgent. He can click on the service map and see the, the topology, the through service discovery. He can see that rewards processing uh, depends on a load balancer, and there is a database server here, which through the red you can see is affected. So there's an issue with this database server. Like Rahul mentioned, he can see the correlated alert, but he can also uncorrelate this <coughs> and see a list of all the different alerts that come in from a variety of different sources. So if you are like most of the customers we've talked to, you might have multiple fault monitoring systems, but with uh, event management, you can correlate those alerts so you know which one is to focus on. You can separate signal from the noise. So he goes back. Let me go back to this particular alert. He clicks on the alert to learn more about it. And through this new agent workspace, through the NOC workspace, he can 
get details about the alerts. He sees it's a group alert. He sees it's an issue with the disk space. He can see it's automated. He can see the message that came in, that there is an issue with uh, this particular node. He can come down and see that an incident was automatically created. He can even come down and see why this particular alert was rated as critical and urgent. He can see relevant knowledge articles. Now, for the first time, we he can see which customers are affected. So the refresh affected install base items is an integration that we did with our ITOM colleagues. And it's a new API that helps a NOC engineer come in and see which install base items and therefore which customers are affected by this issue. So for the first time, he can see the customer impact of an issue. No longer, uh, he's always got a lot of detail about the, the technical issue, but usually this visibility into which customers are affected is it has been missing. So now that he sees that multiple customers are, are impacted, he can let customer service know. In the past, he might send an um, email or he might call somebody he knows. Now he can just do it through service now. So he comes in and creates a case. And here he's proposing a case to customer service. So he might go in and put in something like rewards, service performance is slow. And same thing. And for work notes, he might put in disk space issue. These are internal, so they are not, uh, he can keep track of what the issue is. So click Submit, and at this point, a proactive case has been created. So now customer service gets a notification that, a, that there is a potential customer issue, multiple customers are affected, and they need to go in and take action. So this is one the first example where we have built an out-of-the-box integration between ITOM and CSM so that the knock engineer can see which customers are affected and can let customer service know through ServiceNow itself. So for, for some of you who might be wondering about, uh, you know, where does the work get uh, done, the actual work of, of uh, resolving this, it can happen at multiple different places. So if the knock operator, uh, in this case, David Liu himself feels that he can go ahead and resolve this, but after letting the customers know, he could resolve it using an incident right here, or he could route. He could create an incident uh, and route it to the particular engineer who could be working on it. But the case, the alert, and incident are all related to each other. So the front office, the customer service organization, would always know what is happening in the back end. So uh, it is. Not, it's not just a case that a case got created. They're all linked together. All the work items are all linked together. That's a great point. So we've heard from customers if there is no custom, external customer impact, you could choose to just create an incident and resolve it. If there is an external customer impact, you could choose to create an incident and a case That's right. and then manage customer communication through the case and the resolution through incident. So you have all this flexibility. You can go from alert to incident, alert to incident to case, or just go from alert to case depending on what your business needs are. So with that, let's switch over to Beth Anglin. Beth is a major case <coughs> manager. So because this is potentially a widespread impact, she gets a notification. So she comes into her ServiceNow instance, and she goes to major issue candidates, and she sees that the new major case that was proposed by the NOC is now in her queue. So let's go into the details of this major case. And for those of you who are not familiar with major case, a major case, think of it as a parent case, and you can create multiple child cases. So when you have many customers affected, you just go in and work on the major case and all the changes get propagated down to those child cases. If you're familiar with major incident management, it's a parallel concept for case. So now Beth comes into her proactive case. She can see that it's a proactive case, so there is a flag that's set, so she knows it came from an internal source. She knows it came from the alert channel, so this is through the fault monitoring. She sees the related alert that was created. She can go in and look at all the nodes that were, that were created here. She has all that information. Now, she wants to make sure that the information that is communicated to customers is more business friendly, more customer friendly. So she could come in and put 
change the short description and maybe let's call this proactive alert. Rewards performance uh, is slow and she could even choose to change this uh, priority. Now you could automate all of this, but we're showing you so that you can see the steps. And she comes in and saves this proactive case. The next thing she needs to do is confirm that customers are definitely affected. So she goes down to her related list and she can see the affected install base items and the customers who are affected. So she has now the same view that the operations team has. So there is no guesswork, there's no ambiguity across the organization. And if you think about these two teams, Beth might be in customer service in uh, closer to the customer. The operations team could be in a completely different location, maybe even a completely different part of the world. But they both have the same view into the current problem and the customers that are, that are affected. So she goes in and approves this major case because this seems like a valid customer impact. And let me save this one more time. So now she can come in to major case information tab and she can see that the case is in accepted mode. And what she also notices that the affected customer's recipient list is automatically created. So this is another enhancement we built in New York where the recipient list is automatically created because we know the list of customers who are affected. Now you can use this recipient list to do a outbound email notification if you wanted to. It's available to you. We'll use it to create child cases. And in this case, we will create child cases for the four customers who are affected. So once the child cases are created, uh, if you go down to the, the related list, you will see that four child cases were created, one for each customer. So the four customers who are affected, each of the contacts are listed. You'll notice that the priority is propagated down from the major case. You'll also notice that the short description was propagated down from the major case. So now we've got four cases created. Customers will know that, the, that there is an issue and the conversation with the customer is different from the internal resolution conversation. So while customer service has start, initiated the process of notifying customers, let's switch back to David Liu, our NOC engineer, who is continuing to work on this problem. So David will go into the incident and the first thing he would do is change the state from new to in progress. And he goes in and puts in some additional comments on working on it, expect an update at let's say 2 p.m. Pacific, and he saves this incident. So he started working on the incident, he's doing his resolution uh, work. This is happening in his world. Let's switch back to Beth Anglin and see how these changes are reflected for her. So when she looks at the, the comments and the notes on this particular major case, she can see that the, the, the state change on the incident as well as the additional comments that David Liu put in on the incident are now visible. This is through our service management for issue resolution capability that we introduced in the Madrid release. So now that she knows that David is working on it and that there will be an additional update at 2 p.m., she decides to notify customers. So she goes in and puts in a comment on, we are working on it, expect an update at, let's say, 3 p.m. Maybe she gives adds an additional hour for buffer and she posts this to the major case. Now, because she's posted it as an additional comment, that percolates down to each of the cases that we created. So let's switch to Julie Lewis, who is our customer, and see how she consumes this information. So Julie is from Boxeo. She comes to the customer service portal, and you can see on this portal, we've added in a, a custom widget that shows outages, a degradation, a planned outage, as well as the outage that is currently going on. She can come into her list and she can see the cases that have been created. So she can she sees a new case is being created over here. She can click into the details and she sees the update that Beth posted for her. So 
we've seen in this particular demo, we started with the alert with David Liu noticing that there was an issue. He worked on that alert, created a case, let customer service know through ServiceNow. Customer service through Beth Anglin got all the same details about the issue as well as the customers impacted. She was able to kick off the advanced workflow around major case. In parallel, David was able to work on that incident and those changes were reflected in real time to Beth Anglin, again through ServiceNow. And all through this process, Julie Lewis knew what was going on. She knew that there was an issue. She knew that the team was working on it. She knew when they would get an update. So there was really no need for her to call. She knew that the team was on top of it. The issue would be resolved quickly. And there was no need for her to make any additional calls or incur any additional effort to know what's going on or to know when that issue would be resolved. So hopefully that gives you a flavor for how we are automating this whole process end to end. Now you could automate this even further through additional flows, through additional configuration, but we've given you a representative flow so that you get to understand how all these different pieces mm -hmm. come together to solve customer issues quickly. So we have another 10 minutes, so we thought we'd just quickly summarize the, the top practices that you see. So Rahul, we've, we've <clears throat> you talked about service-aware install base and customer-aware services. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about why we designed these differently than assets. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, assets uh, have been in the ServiceNow CSM for a long time, but uh, what we were, going back to the question of digital services, digital services are different from uh, hardware being sold to a customer. And it is different because uh, we have different attributes of a service that gets captured. And uh, for that very reason, we created a new product model. Uh, but it, we didn't want to stop at that. We wanted to keep uh, get the advantage of, say, service portfolio monitoring going forward or uh, bringing that notion of a service owner being able to track all these services. Access was not a good way of modeling that. So that's why we kind of, uh, for the digital service uh, oriented companies, we are recommending that they go the service our install base route, which is essentially taking into account the fact that you might have uh, a business service powered by application services, which is essentially powered by the infrastructure items as represented with your CMDB. So this brings together the whole world of CMDB and the customer service management together using the install based data model. Cool. So services are different and we've seen customers customize assets and that doesn't work out that well. So this was a great time to introduce a new business model. And I think it also helps because the customer aware service is dependent on some underlying services and infrastructure items. So it's important to know which service or product drives what customer service, exactly. customer facing services. And that, yeah. that really helps us with this new data model. Right. Yeah. And then we also saw in the demo how David Liu was able to understand or was able to, to figure out which customers were affected. So talk to us about, there are some new terms on this, on this slide around sold product and install base item. Help us understand how we connected all these pieces together. Yeah, so if you start from the uh, bottom of the picture where you have the database server, let's just trace our way from from that point onwards, right? So I am the provider of this digital service reverse processing, and I have to uh, use a bunch of you know uh, existing servers and uh, data centers or whatnot in order for me to provide that service. So here you are seeing that a database server, which is a CI in the traditional uh, world, uh, that, that is being used to provide this application service called reverse processing. And this application service and the uh, associated uh, business service that goes with it would have all been in the CMDB, in, a, in what we call the service server CMDB. Now, what we have done is essentially say that, uh, okay, there is another world out here, which is the customer accounts. How do I bring together these accounts with the, with the CMDB? And we do it at two different levels. One is we say that, uh, we have this notion of a service model, which is essentially a new type of product model. So we have a new uh, association table, if you will, called sold product, where we associate the account purchasing that particular product model. And this purchase 
could be you know a subscription it could be a one time purchase any any modality that you support in terms of your customers buying things from you right uh, and this would essentially come from some erp or order management systems if you will uh, now this sort of product it has uh, has a life cycle of course it's purchased and it's deployed and then it's you know then it's used so that whole deployment of a sold product is what an install based item represents right so an install so we introduce two more tables in this whole scheme of things one is uh, an account's use of an application service so an account is mapped to an application service using something called an install based item and then we have a third table which is saying that okay this install based item covers this this different product models so think of the service now example if you will uh, so service now we our customers use service now for many different products for ITS and for CSM for ITOM and they might have one instance where they have one or more of this uh, application services if you will housed and that is what is represented using using this you know data model but they could have multiple such instances they could have a prod instance they could have a sub prod instance they could have a dev instance and these are all different install based items for them and that is the reason why we are showing the affected install based items and not just affected customers because a prod instance of boxio could be affected but the dev instance is still not affected because it is powered through some other configuration items so that is important to know that the, the level of granularity that we are going towards is at the install based item level and not just at the account level which might have different install based items with a, with this particular company that's that's awesome and i also see a hierarchy around sold products as companies are are increasingly selling solutions yeah we are able to capture that hierarchy as well the components and the sub components and you could have more than one install based item it really depends on how you want to model this and how you want to display it to your customers we built a lot of flexibility into this that's absolutely right so service model inherently is a complex product and we have built it in such a way that you could uh, build a service model using others you know sub services smaller services or even like you know you can bring in a component of a hardware mm -hmm. and say that this is part of my service that i provide going back to that example of the digital printing company uh, that's exactly how they would model it right they would say that this is my service which consists of a big digital printer along with some other service components awesome awesome and then the same thing helps customer service as well because they can use that same hierarchy and the same association the connection between customer service and operations to know exactly which customers are affected or when somebody calls in and says you know my boxy or rewards product is not doing well yes. they know exactly where it's deployed they can see if there is an issue so it helps customer service quickly identify what that customer has bought what the customer has deployed and it helps them provide faster service as well so it helps both sides absolutely and this is this is one of the core uh, kind of guiding principles for us when we were designing it that we wanted to provide that uh, it's an often used term for 360 degree view of the customer uh, in terms of the products purchased and deployed right so uh you could see exactly what has been purchased and what has been deployed and there could actually going a little bit away from the whole proactive scenario there could be issues because some things have been purchased but not deployed or not been purchased so this getting this a uh, level of clarity around a product is is in, is very important from a service perspective awesome and then we also used leveraged our service management integration that we introduced in midrate so that case is now connected to your service management processes and we saw that in the demo so both customer service now has visibility into what's happening with the resolution mm -hmm. uh, and we have everybody has has more visibility into when the problem will get solved right We didn't talk a lot about AI and analytics, but we could be using our similarity model that we introduced in Madrid to show customer service agents similar cases. If they start to see reports uh, of of issues um, that may not be exactly that problem, but similar in nature. Yeah, so that can kind of shows up in uh, two different ways, right? So we didn't talk much about the John John Jason persona here, who is a customer service agent. But imagine uh, an outage going on. You would have, you know, customers calling in during the, during that time, and uh, the frontline tier one customer service agents would be uh, would be looking at those uh, those interactions, at those cases, 
So using uh, the similar thesis functionality is actually a great way for them to know that, hey, this is something that is uh, going on and, and that they have to associate this as uh, as part of that particular case. Absolutely. So they can he can even be alerted to an existing major case being open. So right. he doesn't create yet another case and handle it separately. He might associate it with the existing major case so that that customer issue also gets resolved right. with the advanced workflow that's in, in play. And then they can use our, our proactive customer service operations dashboards that are built specifically for proactive customer service to keep track of how they've been, so how proactive they've been and how they can be more proactive. You know, all these capabilities that we've talked about, at the end of the day, we really want to help you, our customers, delight your customers with proactive service from issue to resolution. And that's the end goal that we want to achieve for all our customers. So if you liked this webinar, if you liked the, the demo, we have a video that we just posted to YouTube this morning, so it's hot off, off the press. It's a five-minute video that shows you the demo and some related benefits. So you can point customers to it. You can take a look at it later. If you want to try out proactive customer service operations, if you're an existing ServiceNow customer in your subprod New York instance, you can turn on the plugin and also look at product documentation to learn more. If you're not yet a ServiceNow customer, you can learn more about CSM and uh, sign up, uh, and, and hopefully we'll see you as a CSM customer very soon. So with that, we wanted to take questions. So Rahul, is there, uh, are there any interesting questions we should start with? Yeah, so there were a couple of questions that uh, answered uh, essentially uh, uh, there was a question about what happens if the customer does not use service mapping. Can we show a dependency view instead? And uh, that question is already answered, but I just want to reiterate that as long as the CMDB is populated, one can show the dependency view. Uh, the business services or identifying the business services has added advantage of you know using uh, service portfolio management in the future uh, and also being able to use service product models. Uh, there is another question by... Clark, uh, are you able to show demo incident timeline from open to close and a summary report? What does customers see weekly and what do this look like? So if we understand the question correctly, you want to show a timeline. So we do show that on the case. And if you want to show a summary report, we did introduce a new capability uh, around case digest as well as a case action sum summary. Mm -hmm. So you could, uh, at the end of the of resolving the case, you could create a digest that you can share. And this is a useful way to, show, to share a summary of what was done in the case, what was the resolution, and so on. But even as you're resolving the case, if you need to let people know, you could do a case action summary, which is a summary while the case is being resolved. And again, in our demo, since you are working with external customers, you are working off case and not incident. You, the internal teams will continue to use incident and they might even promote it to a major incident, but that is not visible to the customer. Yes, that's right. That's all the open questions we have. For are there now. any on the YouTube channel? Uh, I'm not seeing any questions on the YouTube channel. All right, awesome. So. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everyone, for attending uh, this webinar. If you have any follow-up questions, you can post it to the community page. And we'd love to see you use proactive customer service operations and hear your feedback and hear the benefits you see from using it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. And those links are available in both this uh, Zoom chat as well as on the YouTube link. And um, make sure that on the community link that we will be posting that additional YouTube. And again, you can always post your questions there at any time uh, for Rule and Abdi to, uh, to, to answer with you and engage with you. So we hope that you'll share this event with everyone and we look forward to seeing you on the community. Thank you all.